Siegel. So, let's go see how this was made. Alright, first step in this project is to make yourself a disc, a dome shaped disc. I had some uh, 3 quarter inch poplar laying around, it's 3 quarter inch by 11 and a half. Cut out a circle on the bandsaw and I turned a dome shaped disc which will be in the center of the metal frame. Okay. <clears throat> you can see we have our piece here. We want to pay some attention to the grain. As you can see, the grain is running this way. And here is our image. Our image is the uh, sigil from the Targaryen house of Game of Thrones, three headed dragon. Um, when you carve with the power carver, you want to. Um, I want to do the detail work which is around the mouths and stuff here. I want that perpendicular to the grain so I want to orient the pattern in that fashion so most of that detail work is not parallel to the grain but kind of going across it even if it goes across it on a 45 degree angle and that's where I think I'm going to be with it. I'll be using this um, Saro wax-free uh, transfer paper, tracing paper, car carbon paper, whatever you want to call it. I'll be using the blue color and that's available in any craft store. So I'll just lay the pattern over that and as you can see it takes up the damn near the whole sheet widthwise so I have to be careful about putting this on. And we'll tape this down making sure um, we're fairly central in the piece. So I'm, I'm going to trim this to, to, to this size circle so I can keep everything the same and then we'll tape it down. Now another thing I don't suggest doing this and start tracing it um, where you're going to be interrupted or you'll come back to it the next day because you're not going to remember where you left off maybe you will but there's a lot of tracing here to get all the images of this pattern on and remember this is all going to be relief carved so all of these should be drawn in because these are all going to be raised up from the image in, to some degree so you want that 3D effect. So you want to get as much detail in here as you can. Okay, we've got it roughed out. Um, there was a lot to do uh, because there's, I guess, so much detail in it. But now you can take a look back. We've gone down to a background depth. Uh, I'd say we're almost about a quarter of an inch on this overall figure here. Now we have to start looking at it very carefully because we need to add depth to this. We have to give it some dimension. In other words, this neck has to be slightly lower than this neck, which is slightly lower than this neck, etc. You see where I'm going? This leg over here to be slightly lower than this one. When I mean lower, I mean back further in the relief. Uh, we got the area over here where we're going to have to have one part of the tail go underneath the other part. I think somewhere over here too. And then we have uh, some depth features to add on the wings and uh, enough detail, uh, a lot of detail in the head. The mouth has to be relieved and the teeth have to be little lower than the side of the head and the mouth inside has to be a little lower than that. We're going to be using very small tools for that. It's... You know, this is the most difficult GLT signal to make because it's the most complicated. But... 
I guess so are the Targaryens. So anyway, that's where we're at now. Uh, once we have that all done, and the next step after that is to undercut all of the edges. That, that gives it a, a bit of a shadow. It even adds, creates more depth. All right, now this step, as you can see, I got this carved. And uh, one of the things, oh, I'm sorry about that. One of the things that I do is I've uh, taken to texturing my background on my relief carvings. And that's copying the style of a very nice lady on the internet named Dixie Biggs and she makes some beautiful carved turned hollow vessels and she uses this stippling technique which is with a round burr um, it kinda sets the background off now the background on this is going to be red it is the Targaryen sigil and the dragon is going to be black. Now for the dragon, the three-headed dragon, I am going to use the um, India India ink. This is Speedball India ink. It's made for calligraphy. And I've done a test panel of poplar that was sanded and had three coats of sanding sealer on it and it comes out nice after three coats of this India ink you have a very deep black black that's what I want uh, by the way I was uh, told in forums that I may as well throw my brushes away if I'm going to use this stuff they said it can't be cleaned uh, somewhere else on the intranet, I found a woodworker who says, yeah, I use a 50-50 mixture of denatured alcohol and lacquer thinner, and the brushes are just fine. And I've used this brush for three coats on this thing. This is the only brush I used. And it was had gray bristles and it still has gray bristles with a little black in them but no run over can clean your brushes I use a 50-50 mixture of lacquer thinner and denatured alcohol soak the brush good blot it in some paper towels and it beats throwing a brush away right yeah. anyway I just figured I'd throw that in Well, there she is, after three coats of the Super Black India ink, Speedball India ink. And I will tell you folks, this stuff is black. We're going to gild surfaces of this, particularly around the, the scales and the whatever the hell you call those things on dragons the humps, the horns, whatever um, so this thing is gonna look like a piece of metal I hope when it's done because it's gonna be framed in forged steel so the background project is tomorrow night okay I have the coloring complete actually outside of a couple of coats of matte finished UV lacquer. I use Krylon UV resistant. Um, this is done. Um, I used the aniline dye in the background because I love the color. It was just the color shade of red I was looking for. And um, I actually like working with these dyes um, much better than paint. Uh, they seem to go where you want them to go and um, I've applied the silver gilders wax and I must say that this three-headed dragon looks like a piece of pewter 
on that. And that's going to really um, be accented uh, with the uh, forged frame, forged steel frame that I have designed for this thing. Um, it's going to be an interesting piece. So getting on to the subject at hand of making the frame, um, I have to have it, sorry about that, about ten and, ten and a quarter inches square. I don't have much tolerance there. Maybe plus or minus an eighth of an inch. I'm going to use its square bar stock. I'm going to forge two scrolls up here and have them curl around with a leaf on each end. And I'm going to put two twists in the side, one third span. And the plaque will sit inside of here. And I'll have some sort of strap or something on the back to have it mount that I could mount it on. Now, for those of you who do blacksmithing, you know that this, this while it looks kind of simple, is a pretty difficult thing to make out of one piece. The reason for that is every time you forge things like this, and when you bend the corners and then flatten them out, Hot metal is kind of like Play-Doh. When you roll it to shape it, it gets longer. So I don't have nearly enough experience in the forge and on the anvil to attempt to do something like this in one piece and still have all the dimensions come out right. So what to do? Well, that's why I put it on paper. Okay. I'm going to split this thing in half and I'm going to have two lengths of square bar stock and while it's still straight I'm going to shape the end and then make my bend and make my leaf and get it the way I want it and then from that point I'll measure back the distance I need to make my ten and a quarter inch inside diameter then I could put the twist in here, and then when I get down here, well, I don't care if the piece is this long. At that point, I have extra to play with. So yes, that will mean there's going to be a seam right here in the middle, which I'm going to weld together. Um, I was planning on putting something decorative in the bottom anyway, so I'm going to make one of my uh, forged metal roses with a couple of leaves and put that over the welding seam. Alrighty, it's a lovely hot summer day. It's 10.30 in the morning and it's already about 90 degrees and humid. And what better way to spend the day than in front of a 1200 degree fire? We got this forge starting to chooch up and we're going to start on the frame. The uppers. Nice and hot. Get our start. Pointing. Making a nice point on the end. Is drawing this thinned out rounded part. About four or five inches. That'll work. 
thickening and flattening zalik. Anything we don't get up to snuff here. Hey, we always got a grinder. Don't tell the real blacksmith that. Alright. I will get some final shape to that. And then we'll get to bending. Okay, um, sorry, but um, all during the forging process here, during most of it anyway, my camera which is my cell phone by the way kept saying it was overheating it was overheating I was in the shade but it was just so ungodly hot while I was forging this it was almost like a religious experience <laughs> you know it's just it's crazy but anyway I got this thing forged I have the leaves bent I'm just doing a little grinding on them and I'm going to shape them and I'm going to put some detail in them then I'm going to wire wheel this thing all up and uh, yeah man it fits good it fits good it's a good 10 inches square and that's what I wanted so anyway I apologize for the lack of forging videos but it was weather prohibited I guess okay um, I try to continue this it's still hot, but uh, I'm not doing forging anymore. So uh, you can see I got a I got a back strap uh, tack welded onto here, and that's I'll put two holes in here to um, screw the wooden plaque to it from the back with wood screws. One of the things I want to do is um, do a uh, steel rose on this seam in the bottom. That would add some decorativeness to the bottom all right now there are 10 million and one videos out there on how to make these steel roses they're easy uh, you know I don't want to bore you with the details uh, go to possum forges website uh, and he it's the clearest one on how to make one out of sheet metal anyway what I did with mine is I put it on threaded rod I just drilled it and ran a tap through the center of the pieces and I'll tack weld them in place but you know uh, what I'll do to mount this is drill a hole and tap it here and and literally screw that in and then hit it with a tack weld to hold it in place but uh, I had this rod laying around so I said why the hell not you know so uh, I'm not I, the only difference I do with the roses when I make them is I make them with my propane torch I find the heat is much more even and you get it where you want and it takes just seconds to heat the stuff up and then bend it up into your rows all right so that is the next step and we'll get there okay and so here we have the finished project I um, did a little kind of wire rope or steel rope kind of twist thing to hang it there and you see some of the detail here and that is the sigil Targaryen so I hope whoever ends up with it enjoys it as much as I enjoyed making it, I did really enjoy making it, even though I had some ungodly hot weather to deal with while I was making it, but it was fun. So that's what we're all about here, making things and having fun. So if you'd like this, um, you know, contact me on my website here. I could do all of the Game of Thrones sigils, um, you know, and you could commission a project if you'd like. 
but yeah, so it's another one that's done. See you later.